Let's praise our Lord Jesus Christ for this wonderful opportunity to discuss his words. I extend a hearty welcome to you all to Naftali Trade Road Home and E Church Kochi India. My name is Professor Jacob Abraham. The Sermon on the Mount is a collection of sayings and teachings of Jesus which emphasizes his moral teachings found in the Gospel of Matthew. It is recorded in Matthew chapter 5 to chapter 7. The traditional location for the sermon is on the northwestern shore of the Sea of Galilee between Capernaum and Gennesaret. The Sermon on the Mount is the most famous sermon Jesus ever gave, perhaps the most famous sermon ever given by anyone. The sermon as recorded by Matthew is found nowhere else in the Bible. The nearest equivalent is found in Luke chapter 6 verse 17 to 49. This description in Luke is known as the Sermon on the Plain. For a better understanding of the Sermon on the Mount, it is good to know something about the context of the Sermon. During the time of Jesus, there were two major religious sects of people among the Jews. They were Sadducees and Pharisees. Gospels refer often to the Sadducees and Pharisees as Jesus was in constant conflict with them. There are many similarities between the two groups but there were important differences between them as well. The Sadducees during the time of Christ and the New Testament era were aristocrats. They did not relate well to the common man nor did the common man hold them in high opinion. Religiously, the Sadducees were more conservative in one main area of the doctrine. The Sadducees considered only the written law to be from God. They rejected any authority of the oral tradition. The Sadducees preserved the authority of the written word of God, especially the book of Moses, Genesis through Deuteronomy. They denied God's involvement in everyday life. They did not believe in resurrection of the dead. They denied any afterlife, holding that the soul perished at death and therefore denied any penalty or reward after the earthly life. They did not believe in the existence of a spiritual world where there is angels or demons. Pharisees was a religious society frequently mentioned in the New Testament. This group included chiefly of poor priests and laymen it was a movement to be religious spiritualism the pharisees were held in much higher esteem by the common man jesus had his ministry mainly among the common people this brought him into continual conflict with the pharisees they accepted the written word of god as inspired by god but they also gave equal authority to jewish oral tradition and attempted to defend this position by saying it went all the way to moses it is believed by the conservative jews that god on the mount of sinai gave moses the written law during the day and the oral law during the night written laws were written down while the oral laws were transmitted orally from Moses to Joshua and so on oral laws for the explains the meaning and intentions of the written law they believed that without the oral law or oral tradition we cannot understand or practice the written law as intended by god pharisees sought to strictly obey these traditions along with the old testament they believed that god controls all things it allowed that decisions made by individuals also affect life's course They believed in the resurrection of the dead they believed in an afterlife with the appropriate reward and punishment on an individual basis they believed in the existence of angels and uh, demons the attitude of jesus towards the pharisees is important for us when we study the sermon on the mount the sermon offers an alternative faith and practice to the pharisaic interpretation of the law of moses the pharisees were the keepers of the mosaic law or the torah they believed that having guardianship of this law was proof that they were god's chosen people to whom the messiah would come they believed that the messiah would be an earthly king a son of david whom god would raise up he would establish an earthly kingdom freeing them from roman rule they also believed 
that in order to remain in favor with the god the keeping of the torah was essential the basic of hadith's concept chain of religion was the belief that the babylonian exile was caused by israel's failure to keep the torah or the mosaic law and that its keeping was an individual as well as a national duty because of this they were trying to protect the mosaic law with a precept so as to make its violation almost impossible they also added to these laws and precepts customs which had handed down through the years they took these precepts to such extremes that the original intent of the written law was often lost laws and traditions they had brought in to protect and raise the standard of the mosaic law actually lowered the purpose of the law and made the laws to no effect to the fadisi keeping the written and the oral law was everything the condition of a person's heart towards god was unimportant because of their strict adherence to levitical laws of purity they kept themselves separate from gentile sinners for fear of being defiled the pharisees placed great importance on temple worship but they had no personal relationship with the god their worship was merely formal religious observance the strict observance of the written and oral law and formal religion while paying no attention to the motives of the heart led to self righteousness and hypocrisy throughout his ministry jesus was openly opposed to the pharisees he denounced them publicly for their hypocrisy spiritual blindness and evil ways the law was intended to enable the israelites to live righteous lives but the pharisees had corrupted the law disregarding any ethical considerations and being devoid of mercy they imposed an intolerable burden of legal observance upon the common people life for the jews became slavery to the legal precepts invented by the experts of the law jesus condemned the pharisees for being careful to appear righteous on the outside while inside they were full of greed and wickedness so on many occasions jesus made reference to his divinity and asserted his authority over the pharisees on this background of religious and political reality jesus started his ministry on earth as a jewish rabbi do not forget whatever we have been studying so far we need all of them to understand the importance of the sermon on the mount now let us discuss the sermon on the background of this context matthew was writing his gospel chiefly for jewish christians so he follows many jewish traditions of writing down a divine history and matthew intentionally brings to our attention parallels between the jewish and jesus concept of the kingdom of heaven kingdom of heaven was not a new idea proposed by john the baptist or jesus kingdom of heaven is the hope of the jews from the old testament time itself they expected a political king who will establish his kingdom forever defeating and conquering all their enemies thus there will be peace and joy in the land of course this is the plan of god about humans but with uh, some differences the organizing of the kingdom as a separate holy nation with the god as the king and his chosen people as priestly kings happened in the old testament itself while the jews were traveling through the desert at the mount of sinai god came down to declare his nation on this earth exodus chapter 19 verse 5 and 6 Now therefore if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people for all the earth is mine and you shall to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation these are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel This was the purpose of the meeting between God and the Israelites in another way this was the purpose of God choosing Abraham and his descendants now a kingdom need a king spear of action people and laws here 
they had god as their king the promised land as a sphere of action israel is as the people for the laws that should govern the kingdom and his people god called moses to go up to the mountain top and receive them directly from the king the king came on the mount of sinai not just to give the laws he came to declare and establish his new nation this is the only nation that god has declared into existence this is the only nation whose king is god and this is the only nation that came into being by a covenant between god and humans Let us see the picture of Moses the great prophet and political leader of Israel is climbing up the mountain of Sinai Moses stood in the presence of God for 40 days and 40 nights God declared the beginning and establishment of the nation and prescribed the laws of the kingdom to Moses Moses then came down to the people with the laws to offer sacrifice and partake in a covenant meal thus came into being the nation Israel In Matthew chapter 5 by seeing the multitude Jesus went up on a mountain when he was seated his disciples came to him then he opened his mouth and taught them the precepts of the kingdom of heaven The incident recalled the historical event of Israel assembling in the valley of Sinai to receive the revealed law of God Matthew is presenting Jesus as a new Moses or even as God giving laws. The people is free to take the suggestion as Moses is playing the laws of the kingdom or as God declaring the laws. Jesus is both the lawgiver and the mediating prophet. On the mountain of Sinai God declared his kingdom and on the sermon mount Jesus declared his kingdom. These two kingdoms are not two different ones but one and the same. The true kingdom of God included all those who are predestined by God, those who accept the kingdom by faith in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. In the Old Testament, the kingdom was offered to the people, but the mystery of redemption of humanity through the torment of the crucifixion was hidden. In the Old Testament, the kingdom of God is a promise and a mystery. The Israel was a type of the true kingdom that Jesus inaugurated on the Sermon Mount. Thus the Sermon on the Mount is the law of the kingdom of God inaugurated by Jesus. The sermon took place after Jesus started his ministry on the earth by preaching and manifesting the presence of the kingdom of God. The king has come, manifested his authority and power and now is declaring the laws. Matthew summarizes everything that Jesus has been doing to the present day by the end of chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4 verse 23 and Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. Then in Matthew chapter 5 Jesus goes up the mountain opens his mouth to declare the precepts of the kingdom of god his first words were blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven jesus is describing and explaining what life would be for his followers in the kingdom and jesus is describing the life expected from the new generation of his disciples The key is stated in the following verse Matthew chapter 5 verse 20 for I say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven Here I hope you will remember what we have been discussing about um, the teachings of the Sadducees and Pharisees during the time Surely there were something wrong with the teachings of the Pharisees and Jesus is correcting them. The Pharisees with all their precepts aiming to lift the standard of the Mosaic law actually nullified it to no effect. The Mosaic law was intended to lead people to salvation through Christ but the precepts of the Pharisees led people to the wrong concept of justification through works. 
Jesus offers salvation and inheritance to the kingdom of God by grace of God through faith and the sacrificial atonement arranged by God himself. Abraham and his descendants are saved by grace through faith in the sacrifice arranged by God. The sacrifice on the Mount Moriah is a type of this great truth. Abraham understood and had faith in this mystery and his faith was accounted to him for righteousness. Surely, Jesus is presenting his precepts better and higher than the Mount. mosaic laws the sermon on the mount covers several different topics it is about how to live a life that is dedicated to and pleasing to god free from hypocrisy full of love and grace full of wisdom and discernment the sermon on the mount is a preview of christian living within the kingdom of god the sermon speaks of the true relationship of christians to god The forgiving God takes the initiative in relating to humans. The sermon explains how we should correspondingly respond from our hearts to the generous Heavenly Father. The Sermon on the Mount contains key teachings that Jesus himself demonstrated through the way he lived and in what he taught throughout his ministry. It starts with the Beatitudes, short stains about who is blessed. Jesus goes on to commission them to show greater righteousness than that of the scribes and the Pharisees. The sermon covers teaching on the Jewish law, anger, adultery, divorce and remarriage, woes, revenge and love of enemies, charity, prayer and fasting, riches and possessions. and uh, judging others this is frequently used as examples from the jewish law to build his teachings on and explains that he is the fulfillment of the law the sermon ends with the story of the wise man who built his house upon the rock it includes other well known saying along the way matthew closes the description with the observation that the crowds were astounded at his teaching The impossibility of earning salvation and the need for grace are the true Bible perspective. Leading humans to this truth is the intention of the Mosaic law. The intention of the law was to help us see our need for gospel, the sacrifice of Jesus. But the God of the sermon is a different one. Jesus was not presenting a list of impossible tasks to humans but rather a higher standard of living. The higher standard is the standard of the kingdom. The law was impossible but the sermon is possible. The law is wisdom from God inviting us through faith to reorient our values, vision and habits from the ways of external righteousness to the whole heartedness towards God. The sermon is not law. but gospel Jesus is inviting us into life in God's kingdom both now and in the future age the sermon offers us grace to live according to the higher standard of the kingdom the lord did not offer us grace but the sermon invites us to grace by faith and through grace Jesus is inviting us into a practical life of discipleship we participate in imitate his father trusting kingdom awaiting way of living in the world all of these are by grace the whole sermon must be understood under the principle that jesus came not to destroy the law jesus definitely is prescribing new laws for life without dis- destroying the mosaic laws Matthew chapter 5 verse 17 do not think that i came to destroy the law or the prophets i did not come to destroy but to fulfill fulfill is the opposite of destroy christ further stated that whoever does and teaches the commands he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven fulfilling the torah was the task of a first century rabbi the technical term for interpreting the scripture so it would be obeyed correctly was fulfilled 
to interpret scripture incorrectly so it would not be obeyed as god intended was to destroy the torah jesus did not come to do away with the god's torah or old testament he came to complete it and to show how to correctly keep it one of the ways jesus interpreted the torah was to stress the importance of the right attitude of heart as well as the right action the sermon opens with the famous beatitudes the blessedness these are the blessings that jesus talked about in the sermon on the mount they are not prohibiting anyone from the kingdom but inviting all to inherit in the kingdom jesus was revealing god's kingdom to real people in real cultures the verses beginning with the word blessed are commonly called the beatitudes beatitudes means a state of supreme happiness the beatitudes as the sermon's first verse come not with threats they describe the new community of believers identified with jesus they are god's law fulfilled in jesus and applied to christians the new community of jesus include the poor and spirits the merciful the peacemakers those persecuted for his sake and those persecuted because of righteousness the beatitudes present the value system of the kingdom of god the pharisees had a value system built upon the written law oral traditions and extended precepts of their own by obeying them they created a system of belief that is based on the merit based salvation obedience to all precepts of the pharisees created a self righteousness in the people i remember the young rich man who came to jesus for a righteous certificate he was filled with the self righteousness on the basis of his obedience to the precepts of the pharisees of the day but jesus looked into his heart and rejected his claim to the kingdom jesus wanted a person poor in spirit in the beatitude jesus is concerned with the spiritual realities not material possessions poor in spirit includes sinners but does not mean sinners there are people who realizes the truth that they need the grace of god for justification they realize the truth that none of their works in this world will justify them blessedness cannot be claimed by anyone without the grace of god and the faith in jesus christ the sinful tax collector in a parable who went to pray along with a self righteous jew is a man who is poor in spirit The parable is recorded in Luke chapter 18 verse 9 to 14. Jesus spoke this parable about those who trusted in themselves and their righteousness. Two men, a Pharisee and a tax collector, went up to the temple to pray. The Pharisee prayed thanking God for all the good deeds that he could do according to the law. He listed his righteous deeds one by one. But the tax collector was poor in spirit. He had no righteous list to present before God. He felt the poverty in spirit and prayed for the mercy of God for a sinner. God accepted the man who confessed his poverty in spirit and justified him by grace. poor in spirit is a condition in which we realize our spiritual poverty to justify our verses before god and pray for the grace of god and face to trust in the sacrifice of jesus surely they are blessed in the kingdom not the self justified pharisees to be poor in spirit is to recognize our spiritual bankruptcy before god it is understanding that you have absolutely nothing of worth to offer god being poor in spirit is admitting that because you are sin you are completely destitute spiritually and can do nothing to deliver yourself from your dire situation this is saying that no matter what your status in life you must recognize your spiritual poverty before you can come to god in faith to receive the salvation he offers salvation is by grace through faith not by works we must recognize our sinfulness before we can understand our need for salvation what did jesus declared in the sermon to answer this question we should have an idea about the ministry of jesus as a rabbi 
Jesus was a rabbi with authority. Matthew concludes the description of the Sermon on the Mount with the observation that the crowds were astounded at his teaching. There were two types of rabbis during the time. Most of the rabbis were Torah teachers, teachers of the law who could only teach accepted interpretations. The second group was believed to have smicha or authority to make new interpretations. Those with authority or ordination could make new interpretation and pass legal judgments. Jesus seems to be a type of rabbi who had smicha or authority to make new interpretations. At the end of the sermon, the crowds were amazed this season so much because the content is new but because of the clarity strength and authority with which jesus teaches his teachings are radical but not out of the blue with this understanding of his ministry on earth let us move forward to the sermon jesus sermon begins with a description of those who would be blessed by god The words of this sermon are as relevant today as they were when Christ spoke them. We are instructed further to ask God for help. The sermon of Jesus Christ ends with a parable recorded by Matthew chapter 7 verse 4:24 to 27. Two people are presented in this parable. One is a foolish man and another is a wise man. They search for a land to build a house and found a suitable one. they both got a land equal in quality offering the same opportunity soon the foolish man started constructing the house on the loose land without a firm foundation but the wise man found that the land is loose and so he dug deep he worked hard and spent a lot of health time and money to go deep and deep into the loose land At last he found the strong rock under the loose land he built the foundation of the house on the rock and built up his house the foolish man finished his house much earlier than the wise man it seems that the foolish man is smarter than the wise man after some days there came heavy wind and rain the wind flew over and the rain fell heavily on the house unfortunately the foolish man's house without a rocky foundation could not stand withstand the wind and the rain it fell and its fall was so heavy the same wind and rain in the same speed and weight fell on the wise man's house also but his house had a foundation on the solid rock so the wind and rain could not harm it all those who hear and does the sayings of jesus on the sermon on the mount are like the wise man who built his house on the rock the question is will we be like that wise man will we take this verse from christ sermon on the mount to our heart jesus directed the sermon on the mount primarily to his disciples but there were a crowd of people who came to hear him speak so the sermon was to his disciples and to the crowd matthew describes it in his gospel for all of his disciples who were added later unto this day none of us can measure up to the vision of moral perfection that jesus presents in the sermon on the mount but it is the god we must continually strive for when we fail to live up to the ideal we must ask god for forgiveness and sincerely resolve to do better in the future the good news is that no matter how serious the sin God is always seeking us out and is willing to forgive our sins and give us a fresh start. Jesus spoke the sermon for us to live accordingly. Jesus lived up to the standards of the sermon. He taught and trained his disciples to live accordingly. By the enabling of the Holy Spirit, his disciples lived to the mark. And by his grace, we can also keep the standards. that must be our attitude it is not what we have attained it is what we are aiming to attain let me conclude this message here thank you for watching thank you for listening may god bless you amen